let's walk through the process of upgrading the spindle on my dyno that I uh, showed off recently. The main goal is to upgrade the bearings for higher rated speed so they can hopefully be less noisy and uh, be smoother. So I'm replacing the fixed bearing pockets with insets so that I can have a slight bit of adjustment. And so here I'm reworking the existing side panels to make a cutout for the uh, new bearing holder. Drilling's a bit sketchy on my machine, so I tend to just spot drill and finish it up on the drill press later. And there's just a simple chamfer to clean up the edge. And that is good enough. No need for the probe for this, cutting the uh, holder for the uh, bearing. This is a much slower one adaptiving out the whole thing. And they're cutting the uh, final surface. And again, spotting out the drills, doing the final edge break, and then we'll come in and slot out the, except for the little tab, breakaway tab. Hardware's all M3, so I'm using a form tap to uh, give the threads that extra strength. And that's how the uh, little mount will fit in. This just drop into the fore jaw. Uh, the existing hole is not uh, even circular, so I, if it's just within a couple thou, it's perfectly fine. Uh, the whole idea is I'm going to cut it to the correct size now anyway. Drop in a uh, boring bar with a carbide insert to uh, rough my initial diameter. We'll take it close with the carbide and then switch to high inserted high speed steel one for the uh, finishing cuts. Just cuts so much smoother and uh, less tool pressure with the high speed steel compared to the carbide inserts that I have. I'm checking the di diameter a lot and uh, just doing test fits. Uh, still just the first project on the lathe, so I'm getting used to it and figuring out how everything works. Uh, doing the test fits rather than trying to get the dimensions spot on uh, just makes it go quicker. I'm trying to get the project done after all. And that already looks way smoother than the original bearings that I had. Really encouraging. Now for the main drive shaft uh, that the uh, disc spindle is going to sit on, uh, we'll do it in two parts. Here I'm turning down the major outside diameter and uh, kind of the same process as the other. We'll do a roughing pass with the carbide insert and then uh, finishing pass with the high speed steel. The main outside diameter is just a little locating feature for the uh, center spindle holder. So the diameter isn't super critical. So here I'm turning down the actual bearing uh, the actual part of the shaft that fits inside the bearing, so this is a critical dimension. Back to high-speed steel again, since we're into uh, doing finishing cuts. And this is the side that will go towards the motor, uh, so before doing final, uh, final little whisper cuts, here I relieve the outside edge so I can get the bearing in and don't have to worry about getting the, uh, you know, I don't need a critical dimension on something I'm going to cut out anyway. So the bearing fits perfect. Hit it with a little emery, emery paper. That's right where it needs to be. So now I can do the uh, final dimension for the 5mm uh, end that will mate up to the, uh, the tubing to fit up to the motor. So I'm sticking to the high speed steel here because I've got a ton of stick out and uh, I just don't have room to get the tool in with the, uh, the tail stock in place. Not a critical dimension, just a slip fit. A little tighter than I want so I'll take one more whisper cut and that's perfect. We'll tighten that up with a clamp. So then uh, just finish the shoulder up, make it nice and square. And uh, because I'm slipping uh, the fit there, I'm just going to come into the parting tool and relieve the uh, inner diameter so I get rid of the radius from the tool. Break the edge. 
and uh, just kind of clean up the uh, very, very end. That side's all done, so now it's time to part off, get a rough diameter uh, measured from the edge, lock the uh, cross slide. There we go. So I uh, put it in the tail stock just to uh, give a kind of a running start to getting the fore jaw aligned, and this is a super critical uh, alignment because this is going to be the opposite uh, bearing, and so this needs to be as perfect as I can get it. So get this within uh, a tenth or two, nice and smooth, and that'll be good enough. Clean up the end that we parted, and the only feature that we have to worry about here is the. Uh, the section that the bearing is going to fit in, so I just use the uh, parting tool to mark off a uh, visual section there, so I'm not watching the DRO and it's a little easier just to watch the thing uh, where it's cutting and uh, there we're slip fitting the thing and just touching up the uh, that edge of that retaining edge. And the same thing there, going with the parting tool to relieve that inner section. Afterwards, I actually came back and pulled another fourth out off the radius here to make room for paint for the optical tack. Otherwise, the uh, paint was too thick for uh, the shaft to slip into the bearing. Now for the uh, the large block that holds the uh, the discs. It's a large diameter part, but very thin because we're just holding a single um, a single uh, hard disk platter. This is two inch stock. We've got a nice face uh, outside diameter. Not super critical because again, that's just a, uh, a, a retaining plate to hold uh, the disc up against. So now we're going in and cutting in a uh, critical dimension to slip fit the uh, hard disc. And that's perfect there. So let's finish up the shoulder. Relieve that. Uh, center section so that should fit perfectly flush do the edge break and now we'll go in and uh, drill the uh, center out so it'll slip over the shaft that we just made we'll open it up with an 8 millimeter drill and then I'll go in straight with the uh, high-speed steel boring bar to get to uh, I want a really tight fit on this um, because this is going to you know really rotate on that shaft we want it to stay in balance as much as possible now I've got a nice kind of airtight pop fit there so I open it up just a little bit more because I'm gonna use retaining compound uh, I don't want it to be a super tight press fit with the relief then time for the cutoff tool This is how the whole thing fits together. That clip slides up on there, a little retaining, bearing retaining compound, Loctite 680, and that will be a nice permanent fixture. The entire spindle assembles like this, with the uh, disc going on there. I'm reusing the clamp from my uh, first prototype. The same dimensions fit, and it's uh, in balance close enough. And that's the uh, center spindle part and a little spacer that I turned off camera. The whole assembly comes together with the uh, bearing plates. Bearings uh, Loctited in to the, uh, the holders just to keep them true. And the uh, first plate is tight and the second one is left loose for assembly. The magnet arm mounted in place and the uh, disc spindle for the eddy current brake. Getting both the pieces rough, roughly aligned. Tightening down the uh, outer edge. Basically getting the whole assembly tightened together and rigid to start with. Now that one bearing housing is left loose so I can spin it on its side and that housing will uh, basically auto center and then I can very gently torque it down and listen to the sound of the spindle spinning freely and know that I'm not putting the, uh, the shaft out of alignment. And as long as I still have a nice free spinning um, motion there, then I've got a nice clean install.
a bit of tape there running. You can see just how smooth and uh, long that this uh, spins for. This is exactly what we wanted. And this is what it looks like running after the whole thing's put together. Far smoother than the uh, original one did, so this turned out uh, really, really great. So I'm going to have to do the uh, rest of the upgrades off camera, and uh, I'll come back and look at the dyno again once stuff is uh, dialed in a little better.